Oh, but I was in the middle of both of them. Yeah. Another one down on the floor. Right there's a key now. Back up a little bit. Here we go, I'm fucking loading. Alrighty guys, today we're going to be going through the best settings to use for Warzone Season 4 for AMD specific uh, graphics cards using the AMD Radeon software. So let's go. Alright guys, so first what we're going to do is change some settings inside Windows to make sure we optimize best for Call of Duty Warzone Season 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to go search and we're going to go game mode. We're going to click on game mode settings. All right, and then what we're going to do is make sure game mode is turned on. Now, this has changed slightly on some seasons. Uh, you don't have to have game mode on, and it's better not to. But currently for season four, it's best to have game mode turned on. So make sure game mode's turned on. Right next, we're going to go into graphics. We click on graphics. We're going to go change default graphics settings. We're going to make sure your default high performance is selected. A uh, default high performance GPU is on your current GPU. Uh, I have it on the Windows to side, but for me, it's going to be my uh, 7900 XTX. We're going to turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. We want to turn this on, reduce latency, improve performance. Uh, you will have to restart your PC once you do. Variable refresh rate. I do have this turned on, so when possible, get a higher frame rate and reduce screen tearing in games that don't support variable refresh rate. So I have this on uh, by default, but you know it's up to you. I do have this one turned on. Optimize windows optimizations for windowed games. So reduce latency and advanced features and compatible by using flip presentation model. Anyway, just have that on as well. All right. Well, next, we're going to do. We're going to go to home. We're going to go into find a setting. We're going to go. Type update. I'm going to click on Windows Update Settings. So we're going to check for updates and make sure all updates are turned uh, are done. We want to make sure that you know when Warzone is updated, uh, our Windows is also updated as well. So I haven't done one yet. I'll do this after the video. Make sure you download and install all your current Windows updates. All right, we can close out of that, and we're going to go into our fault uh, our file explorer. We're going to go into Documents. We're going to go down to Call of Duty, and we're going to go into Players. And we're going to go into uh, options.3.cod22. And now that's open, we're going to go control F and we're going to go thread and search that. And it's going to find our thread count for handling the job queue. Thread count for handling the job queue. Render work count is what we want to change and alter. As you can see on screen, these are the best uh, sort of total values to put in to um, this right here, this number right here for your CPU that you currently have. There is quite a range of it. And what you want to do is you want to change the settings. So all you got to do is delete it and type whatever number it is for you and press control S to save. Okay, we can close out of that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to do another one. We're going to go into these numbers right here, these long numbers. We're going to go to uh, gamerprofile.base. Right, and when that one comes up, we're going to go into here. This is to reduce delay in uh, controller and on keyboard and mouse. Here we go. We're going to go controller advanced, adjust the time and max stick deflection before sprinting in milliseconds. If this is not at zero, make sure to change this at zero. Some people's games are set at 400. Make sure this is at zero. So that's for controller. And if you go further down, you will find a keyboard and mouse setting as well. Make sure you change that to zero if you play a keyboard and mouse. Uh, to reduce the sprinting delay from 400 milliseconds down to zero. All right, you can now go Control S and close that one. All right now, next we're going to delete our temporary files. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you're going to search and you're going to type run, run, okay, and then you're going to type temp. And okay, we're going to click continue. Do you have permission? We're going to select all, press Control A, and delete everything. We're going to go do all, click continue, do this current one, click skip. And delete those. The next thing we're going to do it again, we're going to hit run. And we're going to go center sign, temp, center sign, hit enter. Same thing again, control A, select all, and delete. Do those current items, click skip, and wait till that's deleted. Right now that's done, we're going to close that. We're going to do it one more time. We're going to go run. We're going to type prefetch. Go continue, press control A, and delete all those as well. Do off current items, click skip, and then we're all done. All right, next we're going to open Call of Duty and get into the in-game settings. Right now that we're in game, we're going to go to our little bar over here, go down to our, over across to our settings. We're going to go graphics. Okay, in graphics, we're going to play, ideally you want to play on full screen exclusive. So for me, I'm a streamer, so I have multiple windows, so I play full screen borderless, which I don't find to be too much of an issue, but I play full screen borders. Best for you though, for lowest input latency will be full screen exclusive. Make sure display monitor is selected to your current monitor that you want to play the game on. And display adapter is your GPU that you're running. 
If your screen refresh rate and display resolution are locked, you can change to full screen exclusive and make sure you select your refresh rate, which mine's the max is 240 and my display resolution I'm going to play at 1440p. So make sure that's selected. And if you want to go back, you can just change it back to full screen borders and it will lock at that. Aspect ratio, we're playing on wide 16 by 9. Uh, display gamma, I play on the 2.2 sRGB. Brightness is a preference, but I play on about 55 depending on your monitor. Eco mode preset, we have that set to custom, turn off vSync, turn off vSync menus, uh, the frame rate. So for me, I play on custom, which is the 240, 240, 240, because that is my max for my uh, my screen monitor. You can play on unlimited, it doesn't really matter. Put that on unlimited and enjoy the unlimited frames, do whatever you want to do on that sense. Uh, menu, menu render resolution, put that on native, pause game rendering off and focus mode on zero. Right now over to quality, make sure you apply those settings. Uh, preset we're going to have on custom we have it at 100 which is the 1440p resolution uh, upscaling we have ours on fidelity cast at set to 85 sharpness uh, vram scale target all the way up to 90 and variable rate shading make sure you have that turned on it actually does help with your fps all right the details and textures we're just going to run through these quickly texture resolution i have mine on normal uh filter antistropic antistropic oh it's a hard word to say we have that on low give the field off just the detail quality level on low, particle resolution on very low, bullet impacts, I like to have mine on, it's more inverse, immersive in game, especially for the stream, you know, uh, but you can turn it off for a slightly better FPS rate as well. Persistent effects, make sure that's off. Um, shader quality, we have that set to low. On-demand text streaming, we have that off as well. Local texture streaming quality, we also have set to low. Shadow and lighting, shadow quality, we have that on normal. It just, it doesn't really affect it too much, but I enjoy it on normal. Screen, screen space shadows off, ambient occlusion off, screen space reflections normal, static reflection quality low, tessellation off, volumetric quality low, deferred physics quality off, water grid volumes off, water quality off, all those turned off. All right, over to the view tab. We have our field of view set at 120. This is preference for me. Anywhere between 110 to 120 will be best for your, a, uh, your aim assist uh, settings if you're on controller. But I like the sort of bigger field of view, makes you feel like you're running and moving quicker. ADS field of view, make sure you have that on affected. Don't have it on independent, for God's sakes. Whatever you do, make sure it's on affected. Weapon field of view wide, third person vehicle, uh, third person field of view at 90, and vehicle field of view on wide. Weapon motion blur, make sure these are turned off. Make sure that's off. Uh, world motion blur also turned off. Film grain all the way to zero. First person, third person camera movement set to at least 50%. Third person ADS transition at third person ADS. And spect spectator camera game perspective. Inverted flashbang. So this for me is what I want to have on because I want it to be black screen. And then you can go ahead and go over to your interface tab. All right, now that you're interface, we're going to go through these kind of quickly. The subtitles have all off. I don't like subtitles. Uh, menu text size default, text chat size default. Color customizations. Now this is very important for how your game looks. Click into that. Make sure it's you set it to custom. And then you can set how you want your colors represented in game for uh, like pings or for enemy, uh, how they look for enemies or for your teammates as well. This is the most important one, color filter settings. Make sure you set this to filter to, set the color filter target to both and at 100 and 100 for world and interface color. Now this will make your game pop. This is why everyone's games looks better than yours. It brings it to life. You can do this on console as well. Uh, and it's very important to do to make sure the game looks and looks how it should be, right? All right now we're gonna go over controller settings. So go over to controller tab, this is going to be my controller settings. I do play controller. I am old school mouse and keyboard player, but I play a lot of controller as well. So set your dead zones. You can turn this on and you can do a little test. We want to make sure these dead zones do not move. Okay. That wants to be at zero, zero. So for me, I've got a little bit of stick drift on my left stick. So we got that set to five. You want this number set to the lowest possible you can to uh, have sort of more stronger aim assist. Left stick max, set this down to 60 and right stick dead zone. That's mine right there at two. A uh, little bit of drift on the right stick as well, but it's not too bad. Right stick max, set this to 99. Left trigger at zero, right trigger at zero. Uh, and my aiming tab, so your sensitivity is up to you. I play on 6.5. I find it better because if I'm, I don't need to snap too much vertically. It's more horizontal, so I don't want to be like snapping on someone horizontally and then it flicks up a little bit. So I have that on a little bit lower. Play works comfortable for you. Whatever works. ADS sensitivity multiplier, I have it at 0 0.85. Sensitivity multiplier, don't touch these. Vertical aim axis, don't touch these. Tactical stance sensitivity multiplier, we have that one. Aim response curve, curve type, we have that set to dynamic. 
And make sure you set this at, at uh, leave it at one. Actually, leave it at dynamic and one. Dynamic is what you want to play. This is what all the pros use. Make sure you use dynamic. ADS sensitive transition timing. Make sure that's on instant. Custom sensitivity per zoom. I don't bother with that. Aim assist. Of course, we want that on. Aim assist type on default. All right, Black Ops is a good option. It's just default is the best for the overall overall choice. Third person ADS correction type assist. Uh, motion sense and blur. Um, sense of behavior off, and we don't want to worry, worry about that. In the gameplay, we're going to go uh, movement behaviors. I play auto attack sprint. Slide, maintain sprint, turn that off. Auto move forward off. Single tap sprint. You can have it on single tap run, whatever works for you. Um, just try and see what feels better for you. Ground mantle off. Automatic airborne mantle partial. Automatic ground mantle hang off. Slide dive behavior slide only. So you can change this to hybrid, which lets you use your left thumbstick to click in, I believe it is, uh, to dive as well. It gives you both the options and there is no delay like there used to be. But I still play on slide only. I don't dive on controller. Plunging underwater, you actually set this to free because it means you can just move up and down instead of using your up and down triggers. Parachute automatic behavior, I have this off and it lets me fly down to the ground a lot quicker before having to pull my chute. Sprinting door bash, you have that turned on because you want to get through those doors quick. Ledge climb behavior, mantle only. Uh, that one's just set there like that. Aim down sight behavior, hold, change sprint, zoom activation. Sprint tactical, sprint focus, make sure that's on. Equipment behavior, hold because we don't want to toggle that, it would be a pain in the ass. Weapon mount activation, ADS plus melee, weapon mount exit delay short. Um, and let's copy all these. Look, the, uh, the biggest one here, interact, just reload behavior. Prioritize, interact. Make sure it's on prior prioritize, interact. Pl armor, plate behavior, on apply all. You don't want to be 1v1ing. It's a pain in the ass. You just make sure it's on apply all. Uh, other ones are quick C4 detonation. You can have this on group or one by one. Um, I don't really use C4, so do whatever you need to there. Manual fire behavior, press, not hold. Kimbo behavior, independent. Uh, and the rest of them pretty much should just be standard on whatever normally they're set to. All right, and that should be all of it for the in-game settings. Now we're going to move on to the AMD Radeon uh, software settings. So let's get out of there and let's get out of this and into that. And right, now that we're in the AMD Radeon software, what I what what you need to do first is update your drivers and make sure your graphics drivers are up to date. Now mine are not up to date. I haven't done it for a while. I have issues every time I update my OBS. It just lags and it doesn't work very well. So I keep mine the same. But make sure you update to the latest drivers, always preferred, obviously. So first we're going to go into uh, gaming and then we're going to go over to graphics. Right? I have mine set to custom on my GPU one, which is my 7900XTX. Just, just follow these settings and make sure you set these settings the same. Radeon super resolution disabled, anti-lag, I have mine enabled. So this uh, reduces the lag between user inputs and visual response by dynamically adjusting frame timing. I, I, I just have this on, I prefer it. I think it works well. Uh, I don't have any issues with tearing or lag or anything like that. So turn on anti-lag ready on boost we have off ready on chill we have off image sharpening i have enabled and sets 80 percent to make the game pop a little more a little bit sharper as well enhanced sync we have off a vertical refresh off and list specifies frame rate target control off anti aliasing use application settings and make sure to set this to multi-sampling this is the best setting to use inside the software or call of duty warzone multi-sampling morphological anti-aliasing disabled anti-tropic filtering enabled set to 2x uh, texture st filtering quality set to standard, uh, surface format optimization enabled, tessellation mode AMD optimized, OpenGL buffering disabled, 10 bit pixel format disabled, and uh, you can perform a reset on your shaded cache as well. All right, guys, so that is everything I've got for this video. If there is something I miss or something you want to see or you have a question about something, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.